Hello everyone and welcome to News Tonight. I'm Rhoda Ngonzi. Janano Pori will join us in a bit in sign language. Let's dig into it. The Speaker of Parliament, Rebecca Kadaga, has urged women to embrace leadership roles, not only in politics, but also other positions. Kadaga was officiating at the National Dialogue on the Establishment of Women Leaders Network, Uganda chapter, organized by the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development. Uganda is one of the countries in Africa that have recognized women's rights through relevant legislation. Although the number of women in leadership positions has increased from 18% in 1989 to now 32%, the Speaker of Parliament, Rebecca Kadaga, says the progress is slow and more women need to utilize the space provided for them. Kadaga was speaking at the National Dialogue for the Establishment of Women Leaders Network Uganda chapter, organized by the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development in collaboration with UN Women. Inspector General's envoys, they are always men. You don't see the women, yet there are many women on this continent who could uh, work on the issues of uh, negotiation for peace uh, and conflict resolution. So these are areas that we need to be visible and to ensure that uh, the voice of the African women is visible uh, and uh, is heard. The Women's Leadership Network Uganda chapter will be used as a networking platform for women to front their agenda. As women leaders, that the ordinary women of Uganda have placed their trust in us. We should therefore commit to implement the actions that promote advancement of all women in Uganda. Minister of State for Gender and Culture Affairs, Peace Butunzo, challenged women leaders to be instrumental in uplifting other women at the grassroots. We need to support each other and continue to advance for increased representation of women and female youth as leaders at all levels. Although there is space provided for women to take part in leadership positions, Minister Mtuzo says traditional norms and practices that hinder women's progress need to be fought. Adia Nakuti and Susan Naonga, UBC. Police have vowed to crush the anti-age limit legislators planning to hold processions around Parliament on Tuesday tomorrow as the Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee presents a report on the matter. Police spokesperson Emilian Kaima in a media briefing said the MPs are planning to cause chaos and disorganize the country. However, the anti-age limit legislators insist the bill is ill-intentioned, vowing to oppose it at all costs. Let's take a look. Tuesday may be a busy day for police and anti-age limit MPs in Kampala. The legislators opposed to the amendment of the presidential age limit once the bill dropped. In this bipartisan manner, we would like to say that we have the numbers, but we shall continue persuading those that are at the borderline. We can tell you that it is true that those for no are a big number. Those that are, are still undecided are also a big number. And those that are pro are also a big number. But we can say that by the end of this week, all options are still on table and it's not all over until it's over. The MPs, some of whom sit on the Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee of Parliament, are to present a minority report to the floor of the house. The reason is they are in a very clear and will be known when the report is laid on the floor of parliament. But we do believe that what we have prepared and signed reflects the will of the people of Uganda. Speaking to journalists at parliament, the legislators, led by the Shadow Attorney General, Wilfred Nwagaba, vowed to oppose the bill at all costs. You may have noted that the committee which was mandated to do the consultative process with the people of Uganda only met few individuals within the principles of parliament but did not consult the people of Uganda. 
but using our own established means, we know the people of Uganda are 100 percent behind us. And I would like to add my voice to that of colleagues to call upon the members of the public to turn up in huge numbers because this proposed amendment, evil as it is, we should accord it the most indecent barrier. However, police spokesperson Emilian Kaima says they will deploy to eliminate criminal elements. None of these have notified the police to plan on that, but what we know, the intelligence we have, is that they are bound to commit crimes. They are bound to ferry people around town with a view of commission of crime. Kaima also warned the public against participating in any illegal processions. Ugandans are warned not to get involved into this because it won't help them. Let members of parliament debate and bring about the views that they gathered when they came to you. If they want a mob kind of debate around parliament, we find that untenable and we shall stop them. Led by Mwanga Chivomi, the MP of Tamara County, the opposition legislators announced this week, a Tojikwatako week, with a call on people to dress in red as a color to resist the amendment of the presidential age limit. All the rallies we've been, and there are so many other activities we are going to announce. So across the board, across the country, be it in the road, whoever can pick a right up on the tarmac, can you write a word, Tojikwatako? The bill that has been on consultations for about three months returns for the second reading on Tuesday this week. Henry Okrut and Philip Aguta, UBC. Thank you, Aguta and Okrut. Government is engaging local leaders and public servants on Uganda's national vision. According to the Commissioner of National Guidance, Kambarage Kwakonge, the move is aimed at harnessing the potential of citizens to participate in national development. We have a story. Government, through its Department of National Guidance, is sensitizing local leaders from sub-county level on the national vision. The Commission on National Guidance, Kambarage Kakonge, says their goal is to encourage citizens to participate in national development. When you look at how much resources government has put in to help and transform the people, and when you move around to assess the impact, you discover that the impact is not appropriate to how much has been put in. So that's what we want to improve, so that the people are aware that these uh, this deliberate programs are in place to improve their well-being. The team has traversed western Uganda, delivering the message to various sub-county leaders in Chenjojo, in Toroko, Bundibujo and Kasese districts. Emphasis is on national values and shared interests for sustainable national development. So our purpose here is really to make the people, to sensitize them about our need for our country as one focused goal that we transform, you know, like in the vision, so that by the time we get to 240, at least every home, in one way or another, in a year, minimally you can make about 20 million. In Chenjojo district, they took some time off to monitor operations at Chenjojo General Hospital. This one and this one. Participating sub-county leaders have appreciated the move and pledged to share the knowledge acquired with other citizens. We have learned a lot from this sensitization program because the leaders are now able to play their role as they are required and they have acquired the right formation to pass the, the, the community. I appeal to my fellow colleagues who have attended this induction to go back and inform the others what is transpiring in our nation. 
High unemployment rates coupled with the poor work ethics of Uganda's population are big obstacles to the country's national vision of a middle income status by 2040. Samuel Garandi, UBC News. Parents have been advised to nurture children in a manner that will help them become useful citizens. This was emphasized by the chief guest of the UBC end-of-year party, Brian White, and sponsor, Salongo Samona and Delight Industries. The founder, Brian White Foundation, says it is only if parents nurture children in a direction that inspires them to work for the country, that development will take root. White also gestures that those with resources need to extend help to the needy. I love, I have that passion in me. I love people. I, uh, I'm also an orphan. I give back to the small. These are, you know, the heart to give. It's just a heart to give. It's just a heart. If you don't have that heart, you cannot do this that I'm doing. And I'm going to spread it all over the country, the entire country. Mr. White made the remark while officiating at the Uganda Broadcasting Corporation Christmas and end of year children's party, where he also fulfilled his pledge of buying children ice cream. White also at the function told parents to source talent out of children as an early opportunity to help them develop such hidden traits, which he attributed especially to the disadvantaged like the orphaned. Ben White also received a glass plaque from Chitemi Orphans Academy in line with his efforts to support the needy. He gave hard cash to those with challenges like the performing children. The proprietors of light industry, the producers of tears, fruit drink, Yanomara, and Salong Samona said the decision to sponsor the children end of year and Christmas party also emphasized the value of children and the reason why they sponsored their party. This program conducted by SSO Muto Wonderful is the best of all because it touches all the children from almost three years the university. Anabato, on her part, the TV manager, Miss Jane Kasumba, representing the managing director, told guests that Uganda Broadcasting Corporation is a body that serves all people, the reason why over 10 radio stations and three television stations are in place. We are doing, carrying out a cause, a very, very good cause um, for the country. Without further ado, let me say the children's party was characterized by a variety of entertainment by children, artists, and acrobatic performers. Bonanyo Cosmos, reporting in Kampala. And the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development has commissioned two fully equipped health center threes in Hoima district. Kabale and Buseruka health centers are supplements to composition of the people that were affected by the construction of the oil refinery in the area. State Minister for Minerals, Peter Lokaris, presided over the function. We we'll take a look. As the country awaits commercial exploration of oil, people in the oil-rich Albertine region are already enjoying its fruits in terms of roads, schools and health centers. The Minister of Energy and Mineral Development has handed over two health centers three to the sub-counties of Kavale and Useruka in Hoima district. These are some of the social service infrastructure that has been provided by the project affected persons and the communities in the areas where they have resettled. This is part of compensation of the people that were affected by construction of an oil refinery in the area. We still have additional infrastructure to implement. Uh, we are currently contracting a contractor who will work, who will construct the religious facilities, the mosques, the churches, uh, the police posts to ensure that the policemen in this area are well accommodated. 
We have additional water boreholes that we'll be constructing as part of the Chakaboga project. And we are working with the Rural Electrification Agency to extend electricity to the Chakaboga sites for the resettlement uh, affected persons. Uh, we are also working on uh, the access road to the resettlement place. It is in these sub-counties that they were resettled into permanent houses as others opted for cash compensation. This created pressure on social amenities, prompting government to expand existing facilities and constructing new ones. But local leaders have asked for increased staffing and upgrading of Obseruka to a health center for. And we also request the Ministry of Health to upgrade our health center from health center three to health center four something. When you go to Kaisotonia, Honorable Minister, now, and the Kaseta Health Center, the hospital which used it to receive about 200 people a day, at the moment, they are in hundreds, 600, 700. I really want to add the population that you put the, into good use the health center free so that by the time the health center 4 comes we will be able to see that the statistics shows for itself. Samuel Garandi, UBC News. Let's quickly take a break and return with more details. This is news tonight. A new salary structure for public servants has been approved by Cabinet and will be effected in the 2018-19 financial year. This comes on the heels of numerous strikes by public servants over low pay. Minister for Public Service Muruli Mukasa uh, says salaries of public servants will be enhanced in a phased manner and calls upon Ugandans to desist from industrial action. Mukasa was addressing journalists about the new developments at the Uganda Media Center. Uganda has recently witnessed numerous strikes and industrial actions by public servants stemming from low pay. Doctors, nurses, state prosecutors, justices and magistrates have all resolved at one time to lay down their tools so as to make their cause felt. Although many of the striking public servants wanted a quick fix to their grievances, they will have to wait till next financial year. Salaries of all public servants will be enhanced in a phased manner beginning with July 2018, that is in the next uh, financial year 2018-2019. So yes, uh, the figures will be worked out uh, and we hope that they will be certainly will be satisfactory because all the consultations have been made, all the scenarios have been looked at, and whatever figures comes out will be satisfactory, and also take into consideration the current economic situation, the inflation, and uh, the sustainability of these figures uh, in the medium and long term. Minister for Public Service Muruli Mukasa, flanked by the Minister for Security, Lieutenant General Henry Tumukunde, Minister for ICT and National Guidance, Frank Tumewazi, and David Bahati, the State Minister for Finance, announced the latest developments at the Uganda Media Center. Primary school teachers, secondary school science teachers, local government leaders, that is to say district chairmen, mayors, and sub-county chairmen, soldiers in the Uganda People's Defense Forces from private to sergeant level, policemen in the Uganda Police Force from constable to sergeant level, and prison staff from warder to sergeant level, and then security officers at um, the junior intelligence level, and of course all the health workers, all of them, from uh, nurse right up to doctor and consultant. Judiciary workers, including state attorneys and prosecutors, and all scientists in the entire public service. Whereas this is the first category to benefit from the salary enhancement, all other public servants shall benefit from this rise as I said earlier on, in a phased manner. 
Minister Mauri Mukasa says the salary increments vary according to professions and seniority. He, however, says those planning industrial actions over low salaries this year should rethink their decision. No cause for extension of strike or industrial action. Not at all. Uh, because one of the reasons for this is actually irrevocably being addressed by government. So there should be no cause. Minister for ICT and National Guidance Frank Tumembaze emphasized that the salary enhancements decision will benefit all categories across the entire spectrum of the civil service to ensure fairness for all. With this pay rise, government maintains that public servants need to up their game. It is actually going to be even more paramount that there are no excuses. Because if your pockets are comfortable, comfortably lined, there is no excuse to deliver service to the nation. So that is one of the issues that is going to be really be emphasized. It is not that government has uh, ever relaxed on it, but it is part of the bargain. Employment is a two-way process. You're asking for compensation for your work, and we're asking for delivery of service and their terms and conditions, which are clearly laid out. Samuel Senono, UBC News. Former presidential aspirant Dr. Abed Wanika has decried lack of well-educated leaders to steer communities for social economic transformation. He said there is need to develop leadership models with deliberate programs geared towards having well-educated and properly skilled leaders to improve the lives of communities. This was during the launch of the publication, The Daring Leadership at Hotel Africana in Kampala. Former presidential aspirant Dr. Abedi Wanik of the People's Development Party said that lack of well-educated and skilled leaders has undermined social economic transformation of the country. The seasoned politician and academia made the observation during the launch of a publication, The Darling Leadership at Hotel Africana in Kampala. It's a tool that has to be on the shelf of everyone. It is a tool put together by one of our own. We need to begin to quote Apostle John. He said, Africa as a whole and Uganda in particular needs unique, well-educated and skilled leaders with a mix of leadership and management. We will be part of our references for this generation. We will be part of the tools that we are going to use to change our society, to change in our future. The author, Darling Leadership Apostle Tony Sechanzi, said the publication has heavy reliance on the biblical models of leadership and guides the readers on being bold and to stand for their vision. If you want uh, to hide anything from a black man or a man of color, you put it in a book. I think this is something that was said by colonial masters many years ago, but I believe there's a paradigm shift the new generation, the new era, is ready and willing to take on the challenge of reading. It's a challenge we need to take on if we want to see life change and things change in our generation to be able to do things differently, with a different mindset and with a different perspective. Apostle Sechanzi advised African leaders to learn from the late Nelson Mandela, who made sure that there are several experienced people around him who believed in his vision and could seamlessly take over the leadership from him. This report was compiled by Clement Wanjira for UBC TV. Yes, Uganda's private sector is to benefit from a World Bank Group's $2.5 billion private sector wind loan facility. According to Awuma Saidi, the International Finance Corporation's director for Sub-Saharan Africa, PSW facilitates investments but not, uh, does not fund uh, private investments on its own. Now the funds will be dispersed through IFC's partner commercial banks.
to achieve the private sector window objectives, the World Bank Group developed the PSW eligibility and prioritization criteria, governance arrangements, and a performance and results framework to monitor the performance and outcome of PSW. The idea of this window is to enable us to finance certain projects that we were unable to finance in the past because of the risk perception associated with it. And it is a product that is um, uh, for which $2.5 billion of the IDA 18 Replay Management has been allocated to. As one of the 75 least developed economies in the world, Uganda qualifies for the private sector window facility. World Bank Group's $2.5 billion private sector window seeks to catalyze private sector investment. If IFC undertakes an investment, at the minimum, the two things that need to be met. First, it has to be a project that has an impact in development. You cannot go to our board without justifying why you're doing uh, 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 an investment on developmental grounds. The second threshold is that the project has to be viable, meaning that if we give you a loan, we have to assure ourselves that that loan will be repaid. Interested institutions and business entities will access the PSW loan facility through commercial banks, says Umar Saidi, the International Finance Corporation's Director for Sub-Saharan Africa. However, the issue of access of loans through commercial banks was challenged by stakeholders from the private sector who argued that the rate will not be friendly at all. Mitigation, local currency risk, blended finance, MIGA, those things are to be risk for multinationals. But for us who live here, we know that money can be made. Would those SMEs, you know, come directly to IFC? How would that financing look different from what we're already getting in terms of, again, back to the cost of capital? Because exactly with the agribusiness, we're also challenged on the um, interest rates. But even in terms of the local currency term of loan, the addition of the private sector window to the World Bank Group's toolbox enables International Development Association to meet its work in the space where public policy and private investment meet. Dennis Igor for UBC Business. Renowned entrepreneur and farmer Audrey Kravogo has challenged business leaders to desist from overcommitting lest they yield no results. This was during the last ideological training of the year under the gaining scale arrangement held in Luzira. Citing the example of the late James Muluana, Rabogo wants youth to learn from earlier generational entrepreneurs that did not require education to prosper in business. But to be able to build a business uh, from scratch, employ people, deal with taxes, deal with accounts, deal with marketing, uh, deal with failure, uh, come out of failure, start a new, a new way, all those lessons we felt, how many people will ever be in a business school who are running businesses? Every situation calls for a different type of leadership. Huh? When you are starting a business, uh, there is the kind of tenacity, the kind of drive, the kind of commitment, the kind of self-exertion you need because many businesses die after one year because those elements are lacking. When a business has reached five years and it has revenue and it has income and it has accounts and it has people, there is a different type of uh, leadership that you require. Now, I, I use business, but this could be an institution of government. This could be country. This could be company. This could be uh, anything. Nobody pulls you up. You pull yourself up by your bootstraps. No politician, no parent. A parent can only help. No school. A school can only teach what it knows. It is you who discovers your purpose and know that People will find in the garden digging and give you a hole. They will not give it to you when you are sleeping or when you are waiting for when the rain will fall in order for you to plant. That's one. Two, it's a country with too many unmet needs. Very many unmet needs. 
If you do maize, you sell. Tomatoes, you sell. Milk, you sell. Bikajo, you sell. Internet, you sell. Not that in that selling everything is rosy, but it shows you that the demand, the consumption, the market, the needs of society are increasing and they are there. So where do you want to position yourself? So we do all this because we are responsible for this generation. In the world of sports, over a hundred youth and children living with disability have participated in different sports activities in a tournament organized by the Uganda Paralympic Committee to help in identification of talent. Now, as Helen Gazamba talks to us, physical literacy helps improve livelihoods of the disabled and also increases physical activity through participating in various sports disciplines. The president of Uganda Paralympic Committee, Mpindi Mali, says involving people with disabilities in sports helps develop talent and provide athletes with opportunities to live a decent life. Great sport for making this happen in Uganda and of course it has a lot of things for us as Paralympic because this is where we begin identifying talents and also giving opportunity to our children with a disability to have a chance of, of or involving in sport. As you see here, this is about participation, not competition. So we are giving everyone a chance to do whatever he or she can do so that he gets he get to know that there is this arrangement in, the li in his life or her life. And you know, it is some of restoring hope to those who have lost hope. With support from the US government, Blaze Sports uses sport to change lives of children, youth and adults with physical disabilities through adaptive sport and recreation. Cynthia Frisna is the organization executive director. Your project is made possible by the United States Agency of International Development. They have a commitment to the people of Uganda, uh, both in Kampala and northern Uganda here in Gulu, and being able to offer physical activity opportunities to children is very important as well as the capacity building in this area of teachers, of coaches, of local government, of schools, so that once the project is, is complete, then we will um, see that more children with disabilities can participate and be physically active and they can move and they can be um, successful in their movements. Also, part of this project is investing in the Gulu district. Um, we have a, uh, a grant that we are giving to two organizations here in Gulu so that they can offer more opportunities to children with disabilities. And that will go on beyond the three-year period so that there will be a continual um, support of the people in this area. The program targets in videos with spina bifida, spinal cord injuries, traumatic brain injury and visual impairments and other related disabilities. Currently, David Mong is a Paralympic gold medalist, having won it in the London Olympic Paralympic Championship this year. <laughs> UBC, Helen Barbara, Jizamba. National Rally Champion Ponciano Luakataka is to return to competitive wrestling in the final race of 2017. The rest due on the 26th of December in Mukono will have top rally drivers showcase their new machines ahead of the season. Despite the title already decided, Luakataka promises to impress. Perhaps the reason to test his old machine, Subaru Evo 08 to find out whether it can still compete favorably. A drive to buy Lokataka a new car came to a halt after his arrest. Notable names to compete include Ronald Sebogozi, Susan Mwonge, and Laila Mayanja, among other drivers. The Uganda Motorsport Federation highlights most safety trainings in dresses before the commencement of the 2018 rally season. Meanwhile, the 2018 motorsport calendar will have more competitive rounds 
in order for drivers to compete favorably. Currently, Chris Takis Fitidis is the reigning national champion with Ronald Sebuguzi coming in second place. Competing So Meanwhile, City Oilers Basketball Club is in Tunisia to represent Uganda, having retained the title in the Zone 7 Championship for the second time in October this year. Club champions uh, from Nigeria, Egypt and Tunisia are facing the challenge for the continental title. Darius Begues, Jordan Meyers, Robinson Oponi, Stephen Omong and Joshua Team are some of the players on the City Oilers Basketball Club hoping to bring home the trophy. And that does it. You've been watching News Tonight. I'm Rod Dangonzi. Janana Pori is our sign language interpreter. Have a lovely night.